Welcome readers. Today on Book Chat, we are continuing the three book bloggers one series read along, and we're discussing the third book in the Night Huntress series, At Graves End by Janine Frost. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, I am your host, Tamara Ford, and welcome to Book Chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Participate in this book discussion by joining the Facebook group Shelf Addiction Official. You can talk about the series with us there as well as other bookish topics. I hope to hear your thoughts on this book discussion. You can find all three of us on Twitter and Instagram. The links for everything I've mentioned are below in the show notes. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support this podcast by sharing it with some book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. That would really help me out and I appreciate you for doing so. The uncut video version of this podcast is available right now on Patreon. Join us there for exclusive videos, including this podcast after show. We get even more candid. So if you're interested in that at all, you'll need to come over onto Patreon and sign up there. Before we get started, I have to issue a spoiler warning. This is a roundtable book discussion after all, so nothing is off limits. You've been warned. We've got a fun hour ahead of us, so let's get started. So today we are covering book three at Graves End. As always, joining me are the three book bloggers, one series co-host, Casey and Nicola. Welcome, ladies. Hi. Morning. Yes. So before we dive in, we want to be sure to welcome everyone listening as well as our read along friends listening inside the Shelf Addiction official Facebook group. If you want to get in on this discussion as well as chatting live with other readers, be sure to join us on Facebook. We have a lot to cover, so we're going to dive right on in. Casey, would you mind running down the book stats? So this is the third book in the Night Huntress series by Janine Frost. It was published first in 2009 by Avon, and the book has 354 pages. The audiobook was narrated by Tavia Gilbert and is nine hours and 26 minutes long. Okay, cool. Thank you. And for those who finished the book a while back, like me, (laughs) or haven't started (laughs) yet, uh, Nicola, would you mind giving us the synopsis? Sure thing. Uh, Some things won't stay buried at Gravesend. It should be the best time of half-vampire Kat Crawfield's life. With her undead lover bones at her side, she's successfully protected mortals from the rogue undead. But though Kat's worn disguise after disguise to keep her true identity a secret from the brazen bloodsuckers, her cover has finally been blown, placing her in terrible danger. If that wasn't enough, a woman from Bones' past is determined to bury him once and for all. Caught in the crosshairs of a vengeful vamp, yet determined to help Bones stop a lethal magic from being unleashed, Kat's about to learn the true meaning of bad blood. And the tricks she's learned as a special agent won't help her. She will need to fully embrace her vampire instincts in order to save herself and Bones from a fate worse than the grave. There's a lot of alliteration in that uh, (laughs) synopsis. Vengeful vamp and bad blood. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Blood sucker. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot going on. And to me, like this book or audio book, listen, rather, for me, uh, it was like a movie. It was so fast moving. The plot was so speedy and snappy. Like it was, it still is a little hard for me to remember exactly what happened in the beginning of the book. So you guys are going to have to take uh-huh. me back to the beginning if that's where we're going to start. <laughs> because I'm like the high parts. Yeah, I got like the high action scenes and the mm-hmm. pivotal moments I've got. But like the the little things, I'm like, what happened? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Okay, where do you want to start, guys? <laughs> well, just leaving off from the last book, there's, you know, Mankiris can see the future. He's kind of got this um, foresight, right? And he has mm-hmm. seen that they're going, there's going to be a war. So we know that that's going on. And we saw at Bones and Cat's um, joining ceremony, I guess, <laughs> um, uh, in the last book that um, there are some enemies out there, right? So I think that's one of the things to keep in mind, but the opening scene was one of Kat's sort of normal seduce and steak operations, right? They're at a bar and they're trying to um, uh, isolate a a bad guy and someone blows her cover. And then Mm -hmm. then it all goes haywire. And and, uh, uh, so they talk about how that keeps happening. So we're looking at like, they're going to have to change their strategy for the special agent um, operations Mm -hmm. part. Oh, 
and they come up with a, a plan that sounds really great. I mean, no, it didn't. I, I mean, to me, well, look, to, well, look to me, the plan seemed okay because I mean, who's gonna want to stab bones in the back, right? You wouldn't mm-hmm. logically think someone would want to do that, but some people I are mean, dumb. Some people are dumb. Belinda's a bitch and she's dumb to boot. Like she's just, yep. she is. Yep. Yeah. So Belinda, so they decide to try Belinda instead of Kat and that does not go well. And of all the places, so they choose to use her at a Chuck E. Cheese. Like, okay, like let's use, <laughs> let's use her on the first thing we have to do with kids involved. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a great idea. Let's test it there. The the humor in, in these books is really, I mean, I mean, I'm just picturing her stabbing one of those big mouse suit things. I'm just, just, you know, and all the kids were like, "Mommy, make it stop!" <laughs> Mayhem at the Chuck E. Cheese, like. <laughs> And it's not written to be funny, no. you know. It's, no. but, you're, but when you're visualizing, it's just hysterical. And Kat Kat's, seems like these kids are going to be traumatized for, for ten life. Days. Bones comes in and yeah. green eyes all of them. Yeah, like they're going to be <laughs> like terrified, probably nightmares for life. But he fixed them. He fixed them. Yeah, he fixed them. <laughs> oh, if only real life, we could just be green eyed and just forget the nasty parts. Let's just, you know, that would be nice. But. Sometimes, you know. Yeah. But you missed the most important scene right between those two scenes. Bones and cats get officially human oh, engaged. Oh, right. Oh, yes. That right. Was and he cute. gave her the big ring. And yeah. That was very and cute. Oh. On his knee. Went down on his knee. Did, yeah. all, did it all up. <laughs> all old sweet. fashioned and legit, yeah. you know, like humans mm-hmm. like to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And they have to plan this huge wedding and Kat's already like, the menu, we have to have food and we have to have blood and we have to have things for ghouls. It's like, (laughs) it's going to be a crazy wedding. (laughs) Speaking of food, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, but it's not for, not for the plot, but the, the when they went down to the like lower levels of Mankira's hideaway and there was like the, the buffet there. (laughs) That was a little crazy. The, the extra <laughs> arms? <laughs> like, what? Like, let me just, like, tape an arm on. You can pull it yeah, off. Is that it. at the party or at his house? I thought that was at his house, but but I don't... It could have been... Because there was scene. the party before they all blew up where they're, like, painted in glitter. Oh, yeah, 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 That's yeah, yeah. At the yeah, party. Glitter. Yeah, okay, that was where the extra arms were, you're yeah, right. Yeah, the party, yeah. Yeah, yeah the... Um, uh, the gala, I guess. But I mean, then at his has... house, he had that harem downstairs mm-hmm, and the mm-hmm. people who were eating Human... too much garlic and onion. Oh, and my God. Not brushing their teeth well enough. <laughs> oh, that, that guy was, oh, my God. He's like, man, you reek. You're so, he's like, I'm the best one here, okay? I'm the tastiest. You know it. He's like, no. No, not no. if you taste like garlic. Right. <laughs> Like no, well, maybe some people like garlic. Uh, not that much garlic. I understand <laughs> bones. Not that damn much. Okay. <laughs> but um, actually, and that was also where Tate kind of came back in. Like um, mm-hmm. he brought her down there to kind of show her what was what, mm-hmm. you know, going on. And then that was the part we're talking about, right? Where Bones goes downstairs, he brings Cat with him, mm-hmm. and yeah, then Tate Juan. shows up. Juan, it's Juan. Oh, who Juan changed. Juan shows right. up. Right. Right. He's changed. He's like, oh, he's so. Uh, every time I hear his voice through Tavia, he's like, oh, Karina, it's so nice to see you. He's trying to grab a little ass. That's right. Oh, that's great. I was like, do you think I can't see you? I know. He's like, wow. He's so excited. He's like, oh, I can be the freak I want now, and everything's great. It's just the best. I'm like, whoo. What a life! <laughs> it, it is Juan was the is the perfect vampire. Or the vampire yes. life is perfect for Juan. <laughs> so. Yes, he is the biggest hoe, man. He is uh, the biggest. He's so, but he's so good natured about it. He's not creepy, you know. No, mm-hmm. that's why it's like, oh, that's just Juan. Don't bother with him. He's just he's a freak of the week. It's fine. He's fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> fine. Totally he's fine. a good guy, though. It's funny. But yeah, that was fun. 
So there were like a lot of, like you said, comedic relief almost it mm-hmm. woven throughout this book. And I guess it was needed because of some of the dramatic, shocking, oh, OMG. The drama. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the magic was kind of a new element. And I'm, and I'm trying mm-hmm. to remember, I guess maybe I, I shouldn't, shouldn't try to remember ahead, but it seems like it's um, a little different in this book, right? So we get the, the witchcraft or the, the spells and that's not, we haven't seen that before in this series. No, this is the first time we've ever seen magic. Yeah. And I mean, I was kind of thrown by like the whole Patra is like Cleopatra type. Like she's old as dirt, like legit old. And it's like, man, Carrie's is just letting her run all over the place, wreaking havoc. Let's mm-hmm. talk, I, I can't believe he allowed that, you know, but we can get into you that find out now. a little more in his book about his side of the story, but again, yeah. that's future spoilery stuff. So, but as it is right now, yeah, it, yeah. it looks bad. It is bad. This bitch going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is bad. <laughs> She's going around doing crazy things, like you know, kidnapping people, making them work for her, do her bidding, blowing up houses. Explode. I mean, she's, I mean, and of course she is bringing the grave, right? She brought the grave. Mm-hmm. She is I, crazy. I got the sense though, that this is, a, this is new for her, right? Like she might've just not done anything that terrible for the last, I don't know, 500 years, but she's got it in for bones. And this declaration of war has been like, that's what's, what's motivating all this stuff in this mm-hmm. book. Right. So it's not like she's, she's been doing that for 2000 years. I don't think. True. Very true. But I don't think she was sitting quietly by the side. <laughs> knitting <laughs> socks. Yeah. No, she wasn't oh. knitting <laughs> socks. No. She was definitely doing something. Hmm. And actually, you learning know, magic. Right. Probably. She's probably getting herself ready and planning. But if you really want to think about it, it's really all man Carrie's fault because it is all his fault. Mm-hmm. Because you never tell people their future you're not supposed to you're not supposed Mm -hmm. to say hey i see this guy who got who has someone standing next to you him (laughs) standing over you i mean you don't tell someone how they died now they know what they're looking for Mm -hmm. they know you know and i think that kind of put the wheel in motion even harder than it probably would have been you know what i mean self-fulfilling yeah self-fulfilling prophecy and all of that like why can't you keep your mouth shut and then you know and it's like he tries to i guess what's the word i'm looking for he's trying to be play offense right so he knows what she's doing Mm -hmm. so he's like hey bones come join lines with me i want this for us (laughs) without telling him and and of course cat's like what wait what why are you doing this what's going on (laughs) and he kind of tried to help him but he also hurt them yeah so uh that's rough (laughs) and i feel like i kind of feel bad for him a little bit but i'm like you're so old and so powerful to be such a sucker i don't understand (laughs) i I mean the love of a good woman i guess or bad one something she has something else good going on Yeah. This is a very twisty plot, I thought. Yeah. There's there's a lot going on in this book. <laughs> there is. Yeah, it jumps from Kat being recognized at work to Belinda to her dad showing up and torturing her to finding out that somebody's paying him to do this and it reaches to Patra eventually, but it's mm-hmm. so that shit bananas convoluted. <laughs> I mean that whole okay, so first when um Justina calls and she's like, mm-hmm. Oh cat, I apologize. Let's try to come What's together. <laughs> let's let's talk about the wedding. You know, she's like, yeah. are there. I'm like, wait a minute, that was too damn happy. Okay, she's too damn happy. But she skips her little self over there. Hey, <laughs> And surprise, your daddy's here trying to torture us. <laughs> I mean, that was the worst. I'm like, that guy needs to die. He just needs to die. Mm-hmm. Well, he's not he dead yet, be- but, but he's yeah. wish he was, apparently. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because they're be torturing tortured. him. I mean, yeah. for decades. For decades. Which I kind of, 
I would have wanted to see that scene, actually. I wanted to. Yes. I was just going to say, I kind of appreciate that that was off page. (laughs) No, I want to see it. I want to tell tell me all the stuff you do so I can imagine it. And be like, oh my God. I mean, because he tried to make it sound like I am such a monster what I'm going to do Mm -hmm. to him. You are going to never look at me the same. It was so... Mm -hmm stuck in his brain that that she wasn't as ruthless as he is which she was Mm -hmm. wrong but i want to see it like if you're that bad show it to me i want to see i also thought that it kind of made cat look weak like she couldn't stand to be there and she's more human than vampire and she has to be like sequestered away and healing and she should have been there to not necessarily save face, but prove to everybody like, oh, yeah, he tortured me, but I'm still here. I'm the one who came out on top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Justina got hers and she's like, I'm mm-hmm. going. And he's like, fine, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're getting into it, whatever. Well, I think uh, it was a spade that said, well, Bones doesn't care what they think about him. Exactly. Yeah. So that was Justina and somebody else that went along. Tate, maybe? Rodney. Yeah. I think it was Rodney. Yeah, Rodney probably went. Rodney and Justina. Yeah, <laughs> so we were talking about that <laughs> relationship. Oh God, um, <laughs> so that funny. was hilarious when they caught them and like <laughs> Bones is like he heard them and he's right, like, okay, right. let's like, get there. We're gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> I want to catch them. This is gonna be hilarious. And then he catches them, and it he's laughing, and Rodney's embarrassed, and. Oh my gosh. Justina's mad and Justina's Kat's like still calling him all kind of names and she just that's funny. She's like, Are you animal. kidding me, Mom? Yeah, this the is... animal. Right, you the animal. <laughs> like you're talking bad about me. Look what you're doing over here. Okay, lady. Let's let's stop with this madness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then she shows up at the party and she's all glowing and and mm-hmm. um Yeah. She's I won't happy. talk with Muff, you don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she's finally getting some. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> after yeah, twenty some years, yeah. Andy cooks for her. Oh, oh yeah, God. that's pretty good. That's a good deal. Yeah. <laughs> that's two for one. <laughs> yeah, I think that's Funny. cute, though. I feel I like too. that's gonna force her, and it's already kind of changed her in this book a little bit. Yes, mm-hmm. she still talks shitty to Moans, but it's kind of like in this. You know, I hate you, but I like you for my daughter kind of way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that whole filthy animal thing is turning into almost like a, a joke. Like, yeah. you know? So she's still going to call him that, but it's kind of not. It's like a term of endearment. Almost. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like almost. you filthy yeah. animal. Like, <laughs> you, you, you big lug, you know. Right, right. <laughs> I, I do like how Christy, or Justina's character changes in this series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's fun. I did laugh when she stood up to Ian, though. And she's like, you're the one who fucking turned Max and Bones and just, like, yeah. tried to put him down. This is all and your he fault. turned around it and dished it right back to her. Yep, yep. yep. That yep. made me fall in love with Ian. I was like, that oh, was a great man. scene. It, it that was, was the best scene. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I, I changed him because, you know, he was ruthless and that's what I needed. So, what? Mm-hmm. so why not? <laughs> But Justina He's had two discoveries. It. So she figured out about Ian, but she also figured out about Don. She didn't know about Don. Yeah, oh, that's right. she didn't. That's and then right. she tried to blame him. You're going to have my daughter out here. He's like, excuse me. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> so what was she doing when I found her? <laughs> like, and then she's like, oh, I guess we're both doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah. We're awful people. <laughs> so, yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, talk about pot calling the kettle, right? Like, right. get out of here, girl. Mm-hmm. Totally. totally. Yeah, so she has some reality checks along with her love of Rodney or <laughs> lust of Rodney for now. <laughs> it's changing her for sure. You said earlier that you thought it was kind of a movie, movie-like, and I was thinking when I was reading it that, that this we should all, like, go after Netflix, right? Because th- this is, these scenes are really vivid to me. They're very visual. Mm-hmm. Like I, I could totally see that the, the big zombie scene at the end and um, you know, the, the big parties, you know, the lavish um, event, vampire events, like the one where um, after, 
after they thought Bones was dead and and Cat took on all of the uh, uh, challenges, you know, um, um, fought like eight or nine um, challengers at once. I mean, all those things would be amazing on a big screen. Oh, absolutely. oh yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think that Netflix is definitely the one to do it because they could take something dark like this with adult themes and do mm-hmm. it properly. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Netflix pushed the limit. They don't care. They like right. they don't care. The or or, or HBO. HBO could do it too. Or HBO. Yeah. One of those two. Because everybody else would make it softer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some of some of the sexy stuff might be a little much for the screen for as a as a series, but uh, yeah, chapter thirty two <laughs> I mean, you know might what? be a little much. Netflix <laughs> will do it, okay? Netflix, Netflix will do it. I mean, they're not going to show the stuff, right. but you know what they're doing. You know, pan what I'm out, saying? pan out, and just listen to the screaming. <laughs> right, this is not uh, Max After Dark or whatever, but. <laughs> They will, you know, they would get really like real like, oh, I mean, they showed, I mean, HBO too, they show full frontals on men oh, yeah, and yeah. women mm-hmm. in Game And they would get bloody too. Like yeah. the fight scenes would be that vicious, that bloody, mm-hmm. that violent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, Netflix, HBO. Yeah, and they have absolutely. the budgets to do the CG work for these kind of like all the, zon- like all the zombie stuff i mean it has to look good so they have mm-hmm. the budgets to do it let's start a campaign let's do it <laughs> <laughs> who's with us <laughs> yeah like literally like this would be so good on screen i feel like and you wouldn't even have to adapt a lot i feel like maybe with the first book because it was a little slow with the world building but it, this book especially would be really easy to do Mm-hmm. I was just so thinking of that. I was thinking of that opening scene in the first book, though, and she's driving along, and she's got bodies in the truck that are leaking blood, and she gets pulled mm-hmm. over, and she's like, "Cherries <laughs> live on a cherry farm." <laughs> you know, oh, that bloody, would be amazing. Just mm-hmm. see, like the camera pan down to a bloody knife, you know, <laughs> on the floorboards or something, and then, and then you know it's not cherries. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that would be so good. And they need to hire us to help them because we would make it. (laughs) We know what's going on. We won't let you, we won't steer you wrong. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Okay. So, what else do we want to talk about, guys? There's so much. There's so much. (laughs) I mean, I could rant about Tate, but do we want to get that? Okay. Let's, okay. Let's, okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. (laughs) I'm down for it. I can't with Tate. Like, <laughs> I can't. I can't high with you, five. man. I yes, high five. I can't with him. Uh, I'm, he is an asshole. Like, okay, I get it, but I don't get it. Like, he is like super obsessed with her. Mm-hmm. And like, it's scary. Stalker obsessed. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's over the line. Like way over the line. And she's telling him like that scene there in the um. The carnival or whatever mm-hmm. and they're like trying to have to make out and all this other stuff and she, you know cat's like oh my gosh like i can't believe yeah. like you know and he's like oh you felt it i feel it oh, i'm like shut up what's wrong with you like just stop everything you do <laughs> is cringy to me right now that whole <laughs> scene was 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 awful right in a, yeah. in, a, in a good way but awful right where so so there's a scene where they're being kidnapped and um she's trying they're trying to prove basically that she's not cat that she's somebody else and mm-hmm. so the vampires are like well you know bones might let you make out but he's not going to tolerate you know mm-hmm. if you go all the way and so he's like wanting him to do it right there in the limo with four vampires watching <laughs> But they get so scary close. They get real close before, well, mm-hmm. and and you know they can smell right. Yeah. So so that yeah. was like a moment in there where she's like, oh, they know that I'm not really into it. Like, oh yeah. no, what do I do? <laughs> I'm like, ew, this is. Ew. <laughs> and then I mean, he does try to cover, like you know, it's these people here. You know, he's trying to like make her. To, like kind of croon her into feeling mm-hmm. more relaxed mm-hmm. but i'm like it is so gross and i'm like this is the last thing you need to be doing to try to convince him that you're not about him uh-huh. <laughs> he was enjoying himself man he would have been yeah. dead he would have been so dead 
it, it's pretty amazing that he's not dead. Yeah. It's very dead. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> So. And that weird, like, backstory fantasy he had, where he's like, I've known Don for three years before I met right, you. Right. Don all- just found you six months earlier. We would have been together, and you never would have met Bones. And even she's like, that, no, I'd be dead. Because if I didn't <laughs> train with Bones, somebody would have killed me, or Bones would have found me and killed me, or... Yeah. It's like, no, we would be together. No, he's delusional. Because, like, now, and Kat's right. I feel Mm -hmm. like she's right. She definitely wouldn't have survived another six months alone doing what she Uh -uh. was doing. Um, Especially let her come across the one, someone much stronger than she had before. And she she had been done, done. So, yeah. I don't know. If she had met Bones, she would have been done. Like, he would have killed her or been interested in her. But, you know. Like, stop with the shoulda, woulda, couldas, man. Like, this is it, the reality, okay? So just stop. And he did. He tried. I think he did become a vampire for her, even though he swore Absolutely. up and down oh, yeah. that wasn't the reason it was. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, just to catch the readers up from where we're at in the story, I think we're getting into the point where, where Bones uh, almost dies. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about that. Oh, but, okay. But 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 continuing with Tate, right? That that moment where he like puts his arm around her and she like stabs him. He's like oh, right next to his heart. <laughs> really yeah. close. It's He's like, like, you take one more. Th- you do one more thing, and your ass is grass, man. Basically, <laughs> like I don't have time for this shit. Like I like don't try to take advantage. You know what I mean? Like you think that- you could just slide in here? Right. No. No. <laughs> Like that guy, he just, he just fucking died. Like, get out of here. Like, what is wrong yeah. with you? It's been two hours at most, if that. And he's already trying to make a move. <laughs> he's supposed, she's supposed to fall into his arms, spread her legs. You'd be like, oh, take, like, I swear <laughs> to God. That is what he thought. That's that what is he thought. what he thought. Like, are you stupid? But that is what he thought. Like, let's not get it. That's why I hate him. That's why I hate him so much. Like, yeah, he's like, a, he's just lying in wait all the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. But on the flip side, to show somebody better, Vlad shows up and Vlad's there. Vlad and is that awesome. scene with her standing on the cliffs and Vlad's right there just talking to her. That moment just sealed it for me. I was like, Vlad forever. I love you, Vlad. I mean, he's the brother you didn't know you wanted because he's yes. he's really scary. But when it comes down to it, if he respects you, he's got your back. And he wasn't mm-hmm. going to let her do it. He wasn't going to let her do no. it. No, no, he wasn't. Yeah, And it wasn't even like a romantic thing. Like, mm-hmm. yes, he could have fallen in love with her. And he knew that. But that wasn't what he was doing it for. He was doing it for her own good and for her love of bones. Mm-hmm. And if Tate had been that kind of man, maybe I could like and, him. Maybe. And also, and also no. because of his own history with his, mm-hmm. his, his wife. Uh, mortal wife. With, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that was a, a wonderful scene. And mm-hmm. Vlad is, is like one of the coolest characters in this series. Oh, he is. Amazing. He's so badass, And it's like, and he did what he said to her made a lot of sense. Like, are you tuning in as a human or are you vampire? Like, who, what are mm-hmm. you? Who are you? Like, you're not acting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you should be acting. What would mm-hmm. Bones do? You know, he would try to murder everyone. Everyone. <laughs> and yep. What are you doing about to jump <laughs> off a cliff, silly girl? No, basically. And it's like it did. Like, he put it much nicely, much more nicely yeah. than I did. But it kind of made her snap like into place. Like, wait a minute. I've got shit mm-hmm. to do. I've got stuff to take care of. You know, she's not promising she won't offer herself later, but she's going to get revenge first. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. Not going down the Juliet, Romeo and Juliet path. Oh, that's exactly what that would have been. He would have got back and she- <laughs> oh, that would have been. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> And the fact that, well, I, well, Tate did do one, one decent thing for her. And that was getting her the sleeping pills that, so she could actually sleep. She needed to sleep. Let Bones follow him back to the house. Yes. But that was not on purpose. He didn't mean to do that, but that worked out that way. Yeah. Um, but she was Wait, like. Did Don set that up though? Cause, cause, um, 
Bones had gotten through to Don, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don came and got him. So and, um, maybe maybe Don made that kind of happen. Yeah, I mean, when Tate called for the meds, he probably just said, "Oh, here, this is your chance to you know find yeah. out where they're at." which is good on Don for doing that. Um, mm-hmm. But I do think she was like, and everyone there, all her pe- all her people now were telling her, like, you're running on fumes, girl. You need to sleep. You cannot go like this. So, you know, she needed it. And then when she wakes up, that scene was crazy. She's mm-hmm. like, is this a dream? Let mm-hmm. me stay asleep. Don't, yeah, wake, don't me. wake me up. <laughs> like, because oh. she's so drugged out of yeah. her mind. Yeah. Well, she was asleep. Then you get pulled out yeah. of the drug sleep and yeah. you're confused. And I'm like, oh, it's so sad. She thought it was like a dream for real. He had to convince mm-hmm. her. I'm like, oh, <laughs> drink some of this blood and then you'll wake up. Yeah. <laughs> Shake it off. Shake it off, woman. <laughs> I was going to say, I've had those mornings where I wake up and I'm like, what day is it? What yeah. time is it? What is happening? <laughs> Yeah, I have to look at my phone to be like, okay, it's nine o'clock on a Saturday. I don't have to be at work. Yeah, I'm good. (laughs) I can keep sleeping. Mm. But were you guys surprised at all that Bones wasn't dead? I wasn't. Not really. I mean, first of all, it's a reread, and second of all, there's five more books. So, (laughs) well, there's that. There's that. The first time I read it, I don't think book four had come out yet. Okay. So, you know, this was mm-hmm. 2009, 2010, whenever I was reading right. it. And I think reading it in real time. Yeah, more or less. I was reading it real time. So book four wasn't out yet. So I had that just horrific, like, oh, shit, she actually killed him off. Mm-hmm. Now rereading it. No, of course, I don't think that anymore. Right. At the future right. books. But yeah, no, the first time I read it, I had that. I don't know. I felt like even though I know, hello, I've read the whole thing. I know that Mm -hmm. they're still alive. I've read the spinoffs. They're still there. But Mm -hmm. I still feel like this book was like a nice surprise for me. I feel like I must have forgotten so much of the, you know, the first few books Mm -hmm. that it really was sort of like new to me. Like if something will happen in a minute, I'll say, oh, that's right. That did happen. I remember, Mm -hmm. you know, so it wasn't like I went into this book remembering the entire story it was kind of refreshing to me (laughs) like that I did remember everything yeah I mean I don't remember a lot once I've finished a series it's been a couple years since I read it so um I it's oh it's fun to to reread but but there are certain things that you just know are not gonna stick right so Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I think she does a good job of making everybody believe it and the other thing is you know when she was thinking about killing herself and you're you're like okay but he's gonna come back (laughs) you're like oh no don't do that don't do it don't do it (laughs) your your mind starts going at least my mind starts going down like oh what what if she did then that would be a whole different book but it'd be you know it'd be Romeo and Juliet right I mean, even Annette, I liked more in this book. Oh, like, I loved Annette in this book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, after Bones died, I mean, even when, she, you know, Bones picked her up and, you know, they came and they, I think Annette was there when they kind of rescued her from her daddy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, after that, I mean, you tell that they she had. She lost her luggage. Yeah, yeah, she lost her luggage. <laughs> you could tell that they had a respect for each other, Kat mm-hmm. and Annette, mm-hmm. Even though, you know, Kat kind of just accepted her as a part of, like, Bones' family, even though she kind of hates mm-hmm. her still. But mm-hmm. after Bones was dead, I mean, Annette went fucking mad. She was like, oh, I have to go in here and console Annette. Right. Mm-hmm. All people, she's like, oh, my God, you know. That that really was a turning point for them, <laughs> yeah. right? Because yeah. she could see how much Annette really cared about him. Yeah. Yeah. So now I think they just, you know, they're, they're, they're cool. They're cool peeps. They're, yeah. they're cool with each other. And that was a moment that was a little bit of foreshadowing too, about how Kat was going to take care of all of Bones people, people. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so she's like, okay, this is me. This is my role now. I got to take care. I got to do this. So yeah. I liked that scene. And then the very next scene where she accepted as co-ruler and what, like, eight vampires tried to kill her right then and there mm-hmm. yeah it's like bring it on let's yeah. do it and she took them down unbelievable and man Curie's was gonna who was it was gonna champion for her and she's like nope i'm gonna do this and she did i think it was spade 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And man carries like they're both like we can we can kill them for you and she's like, <laughs> like no, no that won't I'm gonna work. rip their spines out. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I respect Kat so much for that because having someone do it for you is not the same. You know, mm-hmm. we just got finished hearing Bone say. We, I need to show people what happens when you go against mm-hmm. me. She just got finished yeah. hearing that speech. Yep, yep. So there's no way she was going to let somebody stand in for her because she needs to prove, I will kill you if mm-hmm. you come for me. And she yep. did that. She did it. Well, not only that, but, you know, the whole, um, I guess the thread through this is that there's a, a turncoat in Bones's organization. There's somebody that's... Um, that gave him away, gave him up. Mm-hmm. And it's somebody that he trusted because everybody that was it, there were, you know, part of his inner circle that he trusted mm-hmm. deeply. So if you have somebody do all that stuff for you, there's always that possibility, you know, that, that they could be compromised. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was crazy. But that was such a good moment. And then I'm like, wow, she's like the head of, and you know, kind of, even though Bones comes back, I think she kind of mm-hmm. still remains like, just as respected worthy yeah oh absolutely because she proved you know if he's gone she can take care of shit Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is important but uh okay it's cat is what she does Mm -hmm. she takes care of shit (laughs) yeah and then i did feel bad for um what's her name i can't remember her name right now cat's best friend oh Denise. Denise. denise oh uh, so you know they have that whole they're in the house for a holiday mm-hmm. New Year's. basically New Year's holiday when like the dead come for them yeah <laughs> the zombies like, the, yes the zombies and I'm like oh it's so sad that she lost her husband she was so distraught and it's like mm-hmm. oh damn <laughs> she's like bring him back like no you can't he's dead sorry I felt bad for her oh absolutely I loved him. He was such a sweet guy. And what was it? The one foot in the, in the grave, mm-hmm. like with their yeah. whole wedding thing. And he was actually good friends with Bones. Like they had a yep. solid friendship. Yeah. Well, he was the one that put the back doors into all of the tech systems at that first compounds so that, that allowed Kat to like um, get the drop on Don. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, no, he was a great guy. And I was really sad. Yeah. It was sad, but I will say that I have never felt like Denise was a very fleshed out character. She always seems a little bit like an afterthought to me. And I think it's because I don't know if there was something that got cut from a book or whatever, but in the second book, she's like, Oh, here's my best friend that you've never met. And we've been good friends for like four years. Yeah. And it just like, she just kind of comes up at moments of convenience. So I, I, uh, of all the characters, and I know that she she gets um, uh, one of the spinoff books, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. She just it's. I think it's not the best character. So, well, <laughs> I don't think it's her. I don't think it's like the character's fault for being. You know, I mean, you know what I'm trying to say. I, I do. Like, I don't. I don't dislike her. I just. Right. Don't feel, I feel like as far as the writing goes, she's she's underdeveloped. Which she that's is. just because while well, she knows about vampires and she knows the world, she's not, not really a part of it yet. yet. Right. Like she's just, still fully yeah. human, but it, she can be at their vampire party. Sure, sure. But what I'm saying is that Frost hasn't sold me that she's that important to Kat, that she's an important part of Kat's life. Well, we talked about that last month when we we're like, mm-hmm. well, how did they get best? Are they best friends? Like how, you know, we mm-hmm. really didn't see that relationship develop enough probably at this point in book three but kind of having read the spinoff yeah <laughs> think well, about it a yeah. little bit differently <laughs> yeah but and i think and if you want to know more about her you should read her book mm-hmm. sure but it, it i mean if you're reading chronologically it hasn't yeah. happened yet right? when does her no. book take place is it far down the road or kind of close it's, to here i think it's after book four okay i think Mm-hmm. I'll have to double check. Okay. It's, it's the keeper like, of the reading order. Yes. That's, I, <laughs> I just defer- look at the list on her okay. website. No, I'm like, I defer to Casey for the reading <laughs> order. <laughs> 
Miss Editor Brain. Yes. <laughs> on the website. I don't have it memorized, but I, I keep referring back to it. Yeah. But I think getting her individual story does make me more care about her. Thus, I Empathetic, think. Empathetic, yeah. Yeah, this mm-hmm. is why I feel really bad for her now because I know her story right. already. Yeah. Right. But first time around, you are correct. I don't think I cared as much. I mean, it's bad. It's sad, but you know. Oh, no, I'm. That's yeah. why we're here is talking about the mm-hmm. strengths and weaknesses and pros yeah. and cons. And that's just my take on Denise right now is like, she's just, she's not as developed as she could be. And I haven't really bought into the idea that she's that crucial in, to Kat as a friend. Mm-hmm. Can I ask what you would like to see as a reader to make her more developed? Well, a little bit more page time for starters. She only kind of shows up when, when, uh, the plot between Cat and Bones requires something like Randy showing up and, and and the wedding happening, or Denise setting her up with the the veterinarian, right? Um, so she she feels a little bit more like a plot device than than a friend right now. Um, so like they don't talk at the at the party, right? There's no scene where Cat's like telling Denise, oh my God, you have to, I can't wait to tell you what's been going on with me and look at my ring and, and doing the things that girlfriends do, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, they had their own little dinner date earlier on, you know, like right before they found Justina with uh, Rodney, where it was the four of them having dinner and talking and kind of catching up on life. But coming from like a pacing editorial standpoint, you can't, have a lot of those scenes of like girlfriends catching up because it's really slow and mundane and repetitive for the reader and the reader just wants to keep going if that makes sense well then then she needs to be part of the subplot somehow right so So, where they're actually doing things together and maybe she's maybe denise is with her when she goes to visit her mother you know and she's i don't know but but she just doesn't seem to be she only shows up when when she when there's a a reason in the plot that like they need a tech guy or they need a best friend so Mm -hmm. which is true as well but i think that not having all that extra fluff is part of the reason why i love this series so much although i get what you're saying nicole and i agree it would make me care more about denise if i knew more about her at this point in Mm -hmm. time but mm-hmm. at that same time, keeping these stories tight and fast and moving is what makes them so exciting to read. And mm-hmm. if we knew more about Denise without using her in a plot, you know, without using her <laughs> in another way, it would probably be boring. Well, then maybe Denise doesn't need to be in the series. Yeah, but I think that is probably why she ended up giving Denise her own book, because people didn't know a lot about her. They mm-hmm. needed to find a way to get her with some person. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that's why she said, well, I'll do more for Denise in this way. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. My own reaction. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it, it doesn't I'm not sure it passes the Bechdel test if we want to talk about that. You know, she, so there's, Annette is way more interesting, right? Maybe it's because she's a vampire, but I feel like um, for whatever reason, Kat doesn't connect with other women, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. she has a terrible relationship with her mom. You know, her and Annette were like oil and water there until for three books, you know, and Denise is just kind of, eh. mm-hmm. so. And I love, I love a good uh, best friend dialogue, you know, and I don't get that here. I do love, and I just got finished saying that on um, my little mini review of the first five chapters of the new uh, Sarah J. Moss book. I love like when there are two strong women that are like best friends, like family friends, Mm -hmm. and they have a good friend circle. And it's like legit. There's no jealousy. There's no animosity. Like that feels good to read. Mm -hmm. So seeing Mm -hmm. them team up and do something or, you know, that would feel good to read to me if there was a way to do it. Oh yeah. Dorinda Jones is really good at doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it's in series, Charlie and cookie have an amazing Mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. And in her new book, Betwixt, the main character has a best friend. And it's exactly like Charlie and Cookie. Like, it's that same. 
Right. That uh, same in, friendship. In contemporaries, Victoria Dahl is really good at writing those kind of um, characters. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Jennifer Cruzy hasn't written anything recently, but her, her stuff in the 90s was really good for that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe, I don't know, maybe for those reading first time, I don't know, maybe we'll get more. I don't really remember. I feel like it's first time for me because I don't really remember. <laughs> when I get to it, I'll remember. <laughs> yeah, so if you're listening or watching, tell us what you think about uh, yeah. about Denise. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. And Tate and Vlad and everything else. Yeah, this yeah. Book. We want to know your thoughts. Yeah, now that you guys know, if you don't know that Vlad has his own spinoff, does this book make you more curious about him? Does it make you want to read about him or do you not really care about him that much still i'd love to know okay so the first time i read the book i was like hell yeah i need more vlad sign me up right away sure so he's great yeah you know i i actually read vlad's book first and so it was a little i wouldn't recommend that so like having that anticipation would be would have been better so i might have to go back Mm -hmm. and reread it although i'm not i might have to buy it again because i don't know if don't know where it went (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this reminds me, you guys remind me to talk about Vlad's book. I have a comment on that in the after show. And okay. if you guys want to know what the after show is, you need to follow on Patreon. Okay. <laughs> Very subtle. Talk about that. Very yeah. subtle. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Of course. Anytime. <laughs> um, so what else is going on in this book that we should be making sure we cover? I mean, we hit all the big, big highlights, but there's just mm-hmm. so much. Mm-hmm. They kept moving compounds. I thought that was interesting. They moved compounds like four times in this book. Every time, mm-hmm. every time uh, they realized that Patra was sort of onto them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Patra. We didn't talk much about her. You guys want to talk about her real quick? Sure. So let's talk about her a little bit. What did you guys think about Petra as like the villain of this, the main villain of this book? Liked it. Did you? Yeah. (laughs) Was she bad enough? Was she evil enough? Did she do enough that we felt? (laughs) Well, she was pretty off page, right? So this, she was Mm kind of like this um, omnipotent evil being that, that we never really interacted much with, except when she showed up at the, the one ceremony. And, no, at the very end too. And at the well, yeah, yeah, yeah at yeah. the end. But um, um, but we didn't really see her. We were just like afraid of her, which mm-hmm. wasn't. I'm not. I'm not. It's not a crit- critique, but she didn't seem like a s- character particularly. You know, kind of like a dark, shadowy entity that you're scared of in the background. Right. A little bit like the Omega in the the. Um, Black Dagger Brotherhood, right? I just thought that, Nicola. <laughs> just thought it. <laughs> it, always, it always comes back to the BDB, but mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. But yeah, she's she's just she's not like a, a three dimensional character. She's just bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how they they finally killed her? Thank goodness. Thanks to thanks to Cat for figuring out. Mm-hmm. what was the sleeper cell in the house uh-huh. right right like they needed to catch like if they killed or destroyed whatever it was that was brought into that house mm-hmm. then all of the dead would just drop the token and, they, and annette was and others were tearing up that house they were trying they were smashing everything they could find to see mm-hmm. kind of like what mm-hmm. the talisman was or whatever right mm-hmm. and it ended up being a person a vampire mm-hmm. yep yep Called Anubis. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you know, she kind of snarks Vlad into taking care of it. He's like, he's too far. He's like, what the, what are you here for? You're like, <laughs> like you're, you're fucking so dragon bad, yeah. Do it. Like, right. <laughs> do it. <laughs> he's like, oh. <laughs> and they slave the day together. They save the day. And then yes. they take out uh, Petra. Mm-hmm. Bye, B. Bye bye. <laughs> so, you know, that was, I mean, I was satisfied with everything. I think. Mm-hmm. I think so too. Like, I'm yeah. not complaining about her needing to be more of a character. I think it worked out the way it was. That yeah. she's kind of this. Uh, I mean, we got a little bit of backstory between her and Mankiras, and um, I, it worked for me. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it definitely worked. And now, Bones. Let's not forget, Bones has a new skill because yes. of his power. Mind merge. reading. Yes. Now he can. Oh, uh, that is the and worst. dying, but coming back. Right, <laughs> but, and that. But mind reading. 
would hate to be with somebody who could read my mind. That is not fair. That is not no. fair. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be that no. would be um, relationship challenging for sure. Yeah, it would. Uh-huh. It would. It would. So okay. So if that's it, I think we should go ahead and rate the book, shall we? Yeah. Ready to rate Let's it? Do it. Yeah. Okay, Nicola. How about you first? Uh, I'm going with four. I love this series. Um, I I just I think that um, I don't know the part the the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. So so um, I'm not going with five on a lot of the individual books, but the series is a five. Okay, Casey. I'm going with a five. I honestly <laughs> think this might be my favorite book in the entire series. It cements my hatred of Tate, but we're just going <laughs> to skim past that and be like, everything else was really great. Mm-hmm. Well, that's part of why it's great, right? Because yeah. it's, it's oh, yeah. bringing the strong feelings. The strong yeah. feelings, the emotions, the nonstop action. I could go into the editorial stuff, but I won't. <laughs> yes, five stars. Okay, awesome. So the first time around, I rated this four, but I do feel like it's more of five now. I feel like I was more, and you guys know, I don't, yeah. I don't, hand, I don't <laughs> I know. hand out the fives. But I was thinking like when I finished it, I actually did say, wow, I think that was a five. And when I went back and looked, I'm like, oh, I didn't rate it a five the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the on me. you. Yeah, so I definitely, I'm in the five bucket. I just thought it was so much going on and so mm-hmm. much that I enjoyed and I just had a great time when I was in, engaged with it so mm-hmm. and yeah this probably is one of the um actually no I, I have a couple more fives now that I'm looking on Goodreads there so it's not the <laughs> best of series but it's definitely up there for me so I mean, I'm rating all the books five stars, but out of the series, I think this one's my top, top favorite. Okay. I have to reread the rest, but this is like right up there. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So, okay. So off of our, you know, legitimate, like official reading list, we are going to read book 3.5 in the Facebook group. And we're going to do a video thing over there. If you want to check that out after this, it's Devil to Pay. But on our official reading list, book four is destined for an early grave. And that is what we are doing next month. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm super excited. Oh, my God. I'm looking. I rated that one a five, too. Let's see. What- <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited for that. So, yeah, be here to join us for book four next month and join us for the in-between books on Facebook and Uh, If you want to comment, let us know what you thought of our comments here on today's show. Feel free to find us on social media and in Facebook again. And And (laughs) (laughs) And that is it. You guys have anything else before we sign off? No, we covered it. Okay. All right, guys. Until next time. Happy reading. Take care. Happy reading. Happy reading. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that love pop culture, from books and audiobooks to TV and movies. I'll see you next time here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast.